And guys, just a quick disclaimer, I wasn't really sure how to make this guide because there is so much to talk about in the RTS. So I've kind of made a condensed version here where I'm going to give you a brief overview. So I highly suggest watching the whole video. I'm going to try to keep it as short as possible. But if, if you have no idea how the RTS side works, it's really worth a watch. Hey, what's going on guys? Cotton here. And today we're going to talk about the RTS side of the game, or the general side of the game. Now keep in mind, the number one question I get asked is, do you have to be a general? The answer is no. Any character that is level 12 and up can get command points and command a team. So once you're level 12, you're going to want to click over here on Assault Teams when you have your character selected. And then I already have a few selected here, but he has room for more. So you're going to want to click, you should have an empty spot here, if not you go to the store and you click buy assault teams, not too hard. So now that we're here, I can just click open, buy assault team. Your first team is going to be a guard troop, it's all that's going to be open to you, They're just these little, these little foot guard guys. And if you don't have any war funds yet, it means you need to fight in the war and earn some. But let's go ahead and buy us a little guard team here. And now this is your most basic AT, this is what you start with. It's basically just a little three-man squad, they're on foot. Of course, more than three people can use the squad, it's just how it's displayed. But they're on foot, they move very slow on the map, but they're also pretty quick to level up. You just throw them into a few battles, and they'll become motorized guards in no time. But we'll go over upgrading troops in a bit. So first, make sure that they're equipped. Make sure you hit this little checkbox here. And now you'll notice it'll still say not deployed. Now that's our next part here. We're going to close this down and we're going to go to the general side of the map. Now on the right here, you'll have a big list. And of course when you're first starting, you'll only see like one assault team here. But as you level up more characters and you get more points, you can have a big army going. But you want to find your assault team. And right here is the one we just bought. You need to click this white arrow right here. It says deploy. Now when you first buy them, your first deploy is free, so you don't really have to spend any war funds there. After they die out or need to be redeployed, you'll have to spend a little bit of your war funds to refill them. So we're going to hit deploy here, and now it wants you to pick a city. So before you pick a city, you might actually want to come look at the map and say, hmm, what do we own on the map versus everybody else? Where's probably a safe spot to deploy them? you know, so I can comfortably bring him where I want. Or maybe you want to deploy him, like, maybe right over here, so he's ready for the front line, you know? Either way, I'm going to go ahead and deploy at Rome because the Americans are moving in pretty hard off of Marseille, so I'm going to move all my men out. But we click this white arrow here. Again, you hit deploy, and you click Rome. And then it, they might not automatically come out. You see right here there's an hourglass next to him. It says waiting for supplies. There is a queue timer for waiting on troops. And if you click it, it'll show you I'm number four in the queue. And actually, <laughs> he just popped. Okay, so that's good though. That means that there's a, there's a low queue time right now for basic troops because the war is very active. All right, now, your new little squad, he's deployed, right? Now, if you zoom in on the map, you'll see him deploy in one of the cities surrounding the capital that you selected. Now is the time for you to actually use that assault team. Send them into battle, level them up, and by doing this, the character who commands the assault team makes a lot of experience. A lot. You can level up very, very quickly by using the RTS side of the game. So there's two ways you can do this. You can either click the city he's in. You'll notice it's a little yellow here. That means you have men parked there. So you can either click the city, and down here you'll see your assault team. You can just drag and drop him. You have to left click and hold, and then you can tell him where to go, like go here. And then you're going to see this flag that shows his destination, and then he's going to move there. Now some things to keep in mind, your troops move faster when the lines appear blue to you. That means that your army owns that road, so it's friendly territory, they move a little bit faster. Whenever you see... Whenever you see lines that are gray or red, your troops are going to move a bit slower through there as the road is contested or it's owned by an enemy. And now while he's moving to his destination, if you want, 
you can click and drag him as well and tell him maybe after you go here go there so now once he hits here he's gonna take a right turn and go up there it's as easy as that now again if you don't want to click the actual city he's in you can use your troops on the side over here you find the assault team drag and drop once again left click and hold and you have an arrow to move him around on the map so as I mentioned, there's a lot of different types of assault teams here from planes to tanks to ground troops and what differentiates them on the map is essentially their movement speed. Things like, you know, foot infantry and foot guards, they move pretty slow as well as tank squads. But things like motorized infantry, motorized guards, they move a bit faster. So as we're going to see right here, I'm going to send these two squads up into this city here. This squad is on foot whereas this squad has motorcycles and you're gonna see a drastic movement difference now this doesn't really matter if you're just trying to passively defend or you know even just help out an attack that's already going but this can help you when knowing when to try to block an incoming enemy attack you can trigger a skirmish things like that we'll get into that in a bit but basically movement speed on the map is pretty important so I've showed you some basic fundamentals here of how to move ground troops around and we've talked about the speeds, about how tanks and foot troops are a bit slower. But now when it comes to the air, when you have things like, you know, fighter pilot squads and paratroopers, they move a little bit differently. Now obviously they ignore terrain, but when you go to move them, you're going to notice a red circle and a blue circle. This represents their limited range as far as how much gas they have before they can crash. Or if you try to move them too far, they don't actually crash, they just undeploy. But the red circle is how far out they can attack from. Okay? The blue circle is how far out they can, you know, just passively move without attacking and wasting fuel. So let's go ahead and move some of our planes here just so we can see how they move here. Now tier 1 fighter squads like these I have, they are the fastest moving unit on the map. They can respond to a battle faster than anybody. But again, there has to be an airport nearby and it, the red circle has to be within that range. Now the same thing goes for para squads. Whether they're tier 1 or tier 2, they have different ranges where they can attack and travel. So I'm going to move these guys up here too. So now as you can see, even though I did deploy these fighter planes first, they do fly a lot faster than para squads. Para squads have a further reach, but they don't move as quickly across the map. There's also one small detail I want to tell you about the paratroops. When you actually deploy them into a battle, whether they're successful or they get defeated, when the battle's over, your foot troops from the squad will be near that battle that just ended. They'll get pushed back one city, but the, the airplanes themselves will go back to the nearest airport. So in order to actually have your paratroopers ready to jump out of the planes again for the next battle, you have to move those foot troops back to those airplanes. I'll try to give you an example here if I can get them into battle. So now you have to decide where do you want to attack. Now myself, I'm actually going to head over here towards Marseille because the Americans are pushing really hard into Italy and we could probably use some reinforcements here. But there's a few things you want to maybe look at before you send your men into battle. If you zoom in, you can click each active battle and you can click neighboring towns and see how many men that your, your fellow players have to use for that battle. If there's a really high number in a battle, you know, a thousand, two thousand, chances are your troops won't get used that much because there's already plenty of troops there. So maybe you want to try to find battles that don't have as many troops. So you can just click around on the map, check out all the different little battles here, and just see where the numbers lie. Now even though there might be a thousand people here, don't be dissuaded. You can still send in your troops, they will get, some of them will get used. It basically divvies it up between every squad there. So some of them will get used, you might get a little bit of experience here and there. One of the best ways i found just to straight up use your troops if you're trying to just power level them up is to trigger a skirmish like this. 
This happens when somebody from the enemy team has their troops coming down the road and you send troops to meet them in the middle of the road. That triggers a skirmish or an encounter mode. When troops actually land on the big cities, that's when it's time to play a proper assault map. So I've already started deploying some of my men up here. I'm going to keep moving them out here. I have recon, guards, motorized infantry. And we're just going to come try to reinforce our brethren up here. So again, I am just holding left click and I'm dragging and dropping. You won't have to worry about moving this many troops when you start. Uh, keep in mind, I've been playing the game a few years. I have quite a few characters built up here. Now notice, I'm not just directly sending them into the battles. I'm going to park them nearby and then I'll slowly send out a few here and there to each battle as they're needed. And I'm actually going to leave my tanks back here for now. I don't have much use for them because as I was looking at these battles, the majority of the tank battles happening are medium, medium tank battles. You can tell by the different icons here when you click on a battle. Like let's see here if there's any tanks. See this battle, the Axis have tanks, recons, and paratroopers, whereas the Americans only have infantry but they do have motorcycles, cars, and APCs. All these different little markers up here will tell you what kind of vehicles and troops that they have. And again, similar to what I was talking about before with the paratroopers, notice here they have 24 paratroopers but zero paraplanes. That means either all their planes got shot down or somebody tried to redeploy that para squad without telling them to get back in the planes first. So now you're finally ready to deploy your troops here and pick a battle and there's a lot of different things to consider as I mentioned the amount of troops already in the battle, the type of enemy units that are in that battle, but you also want to pay attention to the map itself. For instance the battle of Alba here, notice how these two roads are grayed out. That means that if I were to send troops from here and here at Digo and Alexandria that would give our men two different spawn points in on this map that would give them it looks like let me see here it looks like that would give them D and B to attack from while the enemies would still move in from A and E which are these two spawn lines they have so again, that's just something to consider when you're planning on attacking a city. Maybe you see a city only being attacked from the south line and you notice this north line has no men there. Send some men there and then your people can spawn there. So let's go ahead and try to do that right now. I'm going to sandwich this town and attack it with just a bunch of guards. Just to give you an idea of how this works. Oh, looks like my allies are already heading in there. Perfect. Hopefully they'll keep them from blocking and I can get up in there. So sometimes the RTS is a little bit of a waiting game but it's not really that bad and you really start to get into it after a while and you might be thinking to yourself why should I play the RTS side of the game? Well really the benefits are just the insane amount of experience that your characters that are commanding these troops can make and leveling up is very key once you're level 12 you can skyrocket your character from level 12 to 17 in a matter of a few weeks if you're active enough on the RTS battle. And higher character level means higher paycheck. That means the more credits you are constantly earning and it just helps you progress through the game a lot faster. Alright, so as you can see I am left clicking, dragging and dropping and we are going to attack this city from two lines. And you'll notice here, see how this road is blue while this road's gray? Our men have already marched this road, meaning it's friendly territory and your troops will move faster through it. See my men, oh it actually, this line just turned blue but a second ago it was gray. When they entered the line it was gray. So they don't know that this is safer ground so they're going to travel a little bit slower on their way to the point. But now that we're attacking the battle, you can see everywhere you see our friendly troops is a spawn point for our men. So we click the battle and just like we said, B and D are now being attacked by us while A and D, which we, those lines we cannot reach right now, are back here. They're receiving men from there to defend the city.
It's also worth mentioning that aside from different movement speeds on the, the different types of assault teams, they also have different vision radiuses, recon and airplanes having the highest. When you send a recon squad out even near some active battles, you'll notice that you can see troops as far back to here or even over here at Ormia or whatever, that's because there's recon in this area so they can see further than just what the next city has. They can usually see an extra town or two over, which is something to consider. The more intel you have on what enemy troops are in your area, the better. You don't want to accidentally send some light tanks into this battle and then not see that there's heavies parked over here that somebody's going to just drive over here and ruin your light tanks with. Okay, as you can see right here, we actually just won this battle and because of that the enemy troops are forced to withdraw back to their previous town where they came from. And that's the same for your men. When you lose a battle, if they're not totally wiped out, they'll retreat to the next closest town behind them, usually the town of origin. And this is actually rather unfortunate what has happened to Imperia here. They kind of got sandwiched in. They seem to have moved through here and captured this line and it cut off reinforcements, but these guys are actually holding out and still defending. And it looks like they still have a decent amount of troops there. 1,500 infantry and a couple tanks left. Not bad. And now once your men are in the battle, you'll notice on the right they begin to flash. And that means that they're actively in the battle right now. They are engaged. Now if for some reason you want to hit the panic button and pull them out, you can hit the retreat button, but you're going to lose some of your team. You're going to lose some of your vehicles if you have some, and some of your men. It's kind of like a forfeit penalty, I guess, but sometimes you may find yourself in a position where you want to retreat. Like, let's say you have a bunch of light tanks parked here at Digo, and then they send in heavy tanks in. You don't want your light tanks to get destroyed because you don't know if the players in that battle are actually going to pull them up or not. You might want to retreat them or, you know, just similar scenarios like that, I guess. So then you're asking, what happens if my men are totally wiped out? Well, you see above or rather beneath the picture of each assault team, there's a little green bar. No, that's not your experience bar. That is your morale bar. When your morale is totally empty, this can happen by either your troops getting wiped out or just over usage and they're tired. There is a grace period where you have to wait for them to kind of recharge, I guess, and then you can redeploy them. But again, it's going to cost you some war funds to refill the squad to get your vehicles back and your men back. So just keep that in mind. And yes, as you use your assault teams, they will also earn you war funds to help fuel the war again. You don't have to only fight in war battles to get war funds. Alright boys, so now if we hit our headquarters button up here in the top right, this will take us to an overview of each one of our troops that has, you know, assault teams or not. And you'll see now, when they get enough experience, these bad boys level up. You'll see the bar up here. Now basic guard troops, they start at just rank zero. When they level up one time, you can either turn them into motorized guard or foot infantry. And now foot infantry, you get a lot more infantry. It's like a hundred, yeah, right here, 135. But they move real slow because they're on foot. Eventually, whatever you decide to level them up into, you can upgrade them into motorized infantry and then mechanized infantry getting APCs. Same thing goes for the tanks. You can either upgrade them to mediums, medium destroyers, and then eventually heavies. But note right here with the tanks, there is a limit on the upgrades. To get heavies, you must go to mediums. You cannot go from destroyer to heavy. And as you click on any type of infantry here or assault team, you can see how much on the right it's going to cost to deploy, how much they cost, and how much it's going to cost to repair them. And also keep in mind that sometimes when you're upgrading assault teams, they'll tend to take up more command points. Like going from light tanks to medium tanks, you only need one command point to control them, whereas mediums you'll need two. Same thing can be said for ground guard, going all the way up to motorized infantry, you're going to need two command points versus one. 
And as you see, your characters start getting command points at level 12. That's your first one. And the same thing for when they hit 15, 16, and 17, they get additional points. Anything past 17, you have to convert your character into a general. But then again, generals also get more command points every time they level, getting two more at 22. And now there is another way to get command points. Actively fighting in the war levels up a ribbon you have called your War Victory Ribbon. I believe that's what it's called, yes. And now leveling up this ribbon will actually give you command points every four ribbon levels. You get one. So characters who also have this ribbon can command even more troops. Ah, now you see now we, we won this battle that we deployed into earlier, so now the enemy troops are going to fall back. Now chances are, because our friendly troops are already moving down to try to push these lines, that they might block. And a block is when they'll send troops back up this line to intercept the incoming troops, and that, again, triggers a skirmish or an encounter mode. So let's go ahead and move in here and see what they do. Let's force a reaction out of them. They might not be paying attention. Again, you don't always get blocked, um, but it is pretty common to see, especially if the other generals are very active. Well, so far, no block. He might have fallen asleep. Yep, looks like we made it. At least we made it to the top city. Once your men actively engage the city, troops can no longer leave the city. They can only be reinforced from other cities. It looks like we're going to get this line too without getting blocked, so that's good. Maybe we can help get down here and free up some of this coastline. These guys in here are in big trouble. They're just getting bombarded right now and they're still holding out. Good for them. But guys, I think that's all I got for about now. I mean, I'm sure I missed about a million different things. I just tried to keep this very basic and concise. There's all kinds of strategy that goes into this. I mean, from where you position your men to where you move them on the map. But like I said, some of the biggest overview points I can give you is when, whenever you're attacking, just try to look in the area, click the battles, see how many men there are versus how many enemy troops there are. If your team needs help, or maybe you see a battle where they don't have tanks here, but the enemies do, maybe send in some tanks, you know, help them out. Just make sure you're not sending, like, lights against heavies, you know, because that can happen. Something else to note is that you can't always trigger a battle. Let's say you only have one little foot guard team that comes up against another one. The game declares that not a fun battle because there's so few men to use and it's only like one or two assault teams. So there has to be, I'm not sure what the exact limit is. I know there has to be at least 100 infantry and maybe something else in there. At least two assault teams. Something like that to actually trigger a battle. That way you can't just keep blocking up the map or trying to single attack with guard teams all day. There has to be a certain amount to actually start the battle. But yeah guys, I hope this helps some of you understand just how the RTS works. Some of the benefits of it are just the massive experience gains which can lead to leveling your character up much faster so he makes more money. Your assault teams will also earn war funds based on how well they do. And the way the experience is earned, I should say, is how well your assault team performs. How many of those real life players that used your men got kills and captures. You get experience based off of that. So it's not always the same exact gains, but it's still, the experience gains are phenomenal. It's like you just played 10 matches with like that one battle deployment right there. So it's definitely worth your time. But yeah guys, if you have any more questions, there's a lot about the RTS on the Heroes and Generals Reddit, as well as the forums. Come check us out on Twitch. It's not just me on Twitch. There's a lot of other guys that stream the game. Um, I actively play War Battles, but I usually don't stream the RTS side. It's just kind of boring to me. But a lot of the other guys do. You can go for them for pointers. But yeah, take it easy guys, and I'll see you in the next one.